Hi guys, it's Ian here from Cadspace and welcome to another Cadspace blog. Today we're going to be talking uh, briefly about Workgroup PDM and just outlining the basic setup and functionality. So uh, let's just assume that we've installed uh, both the Workgroup server and the Vault admin tool. We're going to go to the Workgroup PDM Vault admin tool initially and this will bring up the login uh, details first up. So Vault computer, I've already typed my computer name in here. Uh, this is obviously where the server is based and the Vault will um, store its files. The PDMW admin is the standard default admin username. Password is exactly the same. What I've done is copy pasted that. I'm going to log in and now we can see we've got our different uh, settings for the Vault. We've got our normal Vault settings here. Uh, we've got, we can set administrators. We've got our users and groups over here. We can uh, create new users, new groups. Projects uh, tab up here sets the projects that we'll be able to work uh, with the folder types within Workgroup PDM. And we can also set folder permissions on the right here. We've also got uh, the revision scheme tab. Um, this, as you can see, cycles through the revisions. We've got a couple of options here. We can use a range from A to Z or 1 to 99, for instance, or we can do a listing. Uh, this just allows us to put any text values and it can cycle through those. We've also got the life cycle tab up here. So uh, this can actually allow us to introduce states such as approved or obsolete for different parts. So we're going to jump into SOLIDWORKS now. As you can see, uh, if you can't actually see this option here, make sure Workgroup PDM is actually enabled in the add-ins. That's fine. And then the little blueberry is our workbook, uh, Workgroup PDM, sorry up here so we can see our projects we've got CAD space projects and two projects under underneath that we want to create a new one so we'll go back into the vault admin tool projects tab new project I'm just going to call this block project I'll have the description the same and I'm going to put this within the CAD space projects folder I'm going to click OK now on the right I briefly mentioned before we can set user permissions. Uh, everyone is currently in uh, read-write access, so they can modify documents within this project, uh, except for these two users down here, user R, user W, which are the standard uh, default users when you install the software. Uh, I can give Steve read-only access by left-clicking here, for instance, and that uh, makes it so he can't actually modify any documents, but he can view them as read-only files. I'll give him read-write for now and hit apply. And if I refresh this over here, we've got the block project folder that's been created for us. So I'm going to log out. I'm currently logged in as the admin. So I right-clicked there and logged out. Right-click again, log in. I'm going to log in as myself. And now we can see the projects. Uh, we're going to create a very simple part to begin with just to demonstrate. So I'll just do a standard block. Give it a couple of dimensions. And extrude that. There we go. So now I want to save this part. I'm going to save that as standard block. Now, as you can see, I've already created a working folder uh, in my C drive. So this is used for my local files while I'm working within SOLIDWORKS. I'll save that. And if I refresh here, we can now see the standard block. So as I said, that's on my local drive. If I want to push that to the server, we have to do what we call a check-in. So if I right-click, check-in active document, we come up with here. Um, we've got a couple of options. I can retain ownership, uh, which allows me to keep modifying it, or I can delete local copy as well. If we select that, uh, that will actually get rid of it off our local drive when we send it to the vault, and it just uh, helps 
keep the uh, usage down, obviously, the storage, and keeps everything nice and clean for us. So I want to put a description. I'll just put standard block. Click apply and then note. It's always good to add notes. I'm going to put initial check in here and you'll see that when we go and view the part history. So that's all fine. I'm going to check this into the block project folder. So we can select any folder we want here. I'm going to click check in. It comes up with a warning saying it's missing a number of description. I've got a description, so I'm fine with that. I'll just hit OK and it tells us the folder is the block project. That's also what we want. What that's doing is pushing that to our server vault. So it's creating a copy of our local copy up here and storing that in our vault. So as you can see, we've got a pink tick here, which means I'm the current owner of the file. So no one can actually access this until I release ownership. So I can do that by right clicking and release ownership here but I want to keep making changes, so I'm going to retain my ownership. So say I want to just extrude that to 80 mil. I'll check that in now. It's saying uh, it needs to be saved on my local drive before checking it in, so it can do that automatically for us. We'll click OK. Now for a note, I'm going to put uh, changed height. Click apply, that's fine, and the revision, I've got a couple of options here uh, due to my revision scheme setup. Uh, I can have B, I can make that a new revision, or A-01, so I'm going to click that one. If I wanted to submit it for approval and then release a new, uh, new approval revision, I'll go B for example, but for now I'm just going to go A-01. Click check in, that's fine. Now that's created a, a revision A-01. Now say I want to do one more, I'll just show that quickly. Check that in again. That's fine, I'll do another note saying shelled. It's now revision A-02, click apply and for this one, I'm going to delete local copy and check that in. As you can see, it's actually closed the file. It's deleted it off my local working folder, but we've got it now in as revision A-02 on our Vault computer. If I, uh, as, as I said with the pink tick, I still own that. If I want to... Uh, switch user and I'll log in as Steve for example. We'll jump into the projects block folder. You can see the blue tick now. Uh, that means someone else has ownership of this part. So uh, now that I'm logged in as Steve, I can't actually access this because the user Ian currently owns the part. If I try and open, check out this document, it actually opens it as read only, so I can't actually check this in or anything like that. So that's fine. I'll log back in as Ian. Now, good thing about a uh, workgroup PDM is it actually keeps a history of every change you make. So if I go right click uh, document information and then go to history. I've actually got the date, times, the users, the uh, the action, so I've got a check-in and a revision update, and then the notes that I've put in before, so initial check-in, change type, and shelled. I want to see a preview of each. This is our latest. I want to see the last one, we've got that one, or the initial was this one. So there we go, everything's tracked. Uh, you can see uh, every every change made by every user. Another good thing is I can actually roll this back. So if I go right click and delete roll back, I actually have to have ownership of this part before doing this, but I can roll back to revision A-01, for example. Hit OK. Yes, I want to do that. That actually deletes the latest copy uh, from both the server and 
my working directory as well. So as you can see, we're back to revision A-01. We're going to open checkout. That's fine. And here we go. We've got the block without our shell. If we go back into history again, it will actually show, show us that we've deleted the revision here. Now, uh, that's all for now, and I hope this helps with Workgroup PDM. If there's any questions, uh, please feel free to give us a call, and we'll be happy to help you out. Thank you.